Well, hello everyone. Thank you very much for taking time to join us here today. My name is Lance Liberti and I'm gonna be the presenter for today's educational health presentation on non-surgical treatment options for degenerative joint disease, such as osteoarthritis of the knee and shoulder. Today's presentation is co-sponsored by Joint Restoration Center located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Because we do have clinics from various parts of the country on today, we would like you to put in your name, the city and state that you're located in, and the best phone number to reach you at in the chat box. At any point during today's presentation, if you'd like to take advantage of a risk-free, no-cost consultation with the medical team at the respective facility closest to you to see if you might be a candidate for some of the non-surgical treatment options we're going to discuss here today. Now, before we begin, I'd like to point out why we're all here today. And the first reason is very straightforward, it's health. To talk about non-surgical treatment options that might help you reduce your pain and regain your function, even if things like oral NSAIDs, pain medications, cortisone injections, and even surgery has not helped you find relief. But the second reason we're here and why I'm your presenter today is hope. And that's because when you're diagnosed with a chronic degenerative condition, such as osteoarthritis of the knee, it tends to feel both scary and lonely. And I know what that feeling is like because I was once diagnosed with full medial bone on bone contact osteoarthritis, what's known as Kelgren Lawrence grade four, the worst you can get. And I was told I would need a total knee replacement at only 20 years old. I wound up with early onset osteoarthritis because I had played high school football. And my sophomore year, when I was blocking on a kick return, uh, one of the opposing players was blocked into me by my own teammate. And not only did they hit the outside of my knee, but when I went down, my foot was stuck under them. So I had a lot of rotation and I tore multiple major ligaments in my knee all at the same time, which had to be surgically repaired. Now, while I was able to get back to walking and relatively normal activities after that, although I was never able to um, pass a sports physical and get back on the field, um, I did lose most function in that right knee a few years later when that repair failed. And I didn't know what was going on. So I went to get an MRI. That's when I found that I was bone on bone and was recommended for a total knee replacement surgery. Now, thankfully, at that point in time, I was working for an advertising agency that worked with a lot of alternative healthcare practitioners. One of those people was a chiropractor up in New Jersey, and I was telling him about what was going on in my knee. And his father was a doctor of osteopathy doing injections of the first FDA cleared disco supplement called Hyalgin at a pain management clinic in Midtown Manhattan. So he invited me to fly up and stay with him and have his father drive in from the city and inject my knee with this Hyalgin medication, hyaluronic acid. First injection, I had some pain relief. By the third injection, my pain was gone. By the fifth injection, I could run and jump and do activities I hadn't done since before the surgeries, before the injury. To me, it was nothing short of a medical miracle. I got my life back. I got to avoid the knife. It was absolutely miraculous. But after the excitement wore off, I actually got a little angry and said, why didn't my orthopedic surgeon, my pain management doctor, my radiologist, my primary care doctor, my physical therapist, all these people I had seen back in Florida, why didn't anybody tell me that this existed? And how many more people like me are out there being told that knee replacement surgery is their only option where this could work for them too? So I convinced uh, the doctor who injected me to quit his job working at that pain clinic and open up a clinic in Southern New Jersey uh, to try and take this treatment to more people that didn't know it existed. And it was very successful. We helped over 600 patients our first year. Uh, we grew to many thousands of patients treated in that facility over time and actually co-developed a now patented protocol called the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol, which has been proven nearly 93% clinically effective in significantly reducing pain and improving function, even when other treatments such as cortisone injections, pain medications, and NSAIDs have failed to provide relief. Uh, once we standardized this protocol, we began teaching and certifying other facilities and providers around the country how to do this as well, such as the co-sponsors of today's presentation. And we now have more than 200 facilities in more than 40 US states offering this treatment. And since we began licensing it, uh, we have over 600,000 patients that have been successfully treated nationwide. So while this is still a relatively unknown treatment, uh, we have helped a lot of people suffering from various stages of osteoarthritis of the knee, uh, as well as the shoulder and other joints as well. Now to talk a little bit about today's uh, co-sponsors, Joint Restoration Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, actually has on-site physical therapy in addition to uh, the injection protocol and some of the unloading braces and devices we're gonna talk about today that can help to stop friction, stop destruction, and give the body a chance to regrow lost or damaged tissue. And both of these facilities are also quite experienced in certain regenerative medical techniques, such as platelet-rich plasma, 
where the growth factors from your blood are concentrated to help stimulate the growth of cartilage, muscle, ligaments, and tendons more quickly than your body would do on its own. And we'll talk about that treatment at the end of today's presentation, because that's something that's not necessary for everyone suffering from osteoarthritis. But if you've had a meniscal tear, if you've torn a major ligament like your ACL or your MCL, if you've gone through surgery before uh, and that surgery has failed to provide relief, or if you developed scar tissue or more pain from the surgery itself, then that's a treatment that can help to reduce that scar tissue and not only help to alleviate your pain, but also to return the function and range of motion you may have lost. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about the reason most of us are here today, which is knee pain. This is something that is rapidly growing in the United States and uh, globally, to be honest, but especially in our country. And according to the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, in 2010, there was a little under 5 million knee replacement surgeries performed. That number has continued to grow up until recently. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, many procedures were deemed non-essential, including joint replacement surgery. So now if you want a knee replacement surgery, you might be waiting months or even years before you can get access to it because of the backlog. But we're here today to learn how to save your natural knees and to delay or avoid knee replacement surgery altogether. Now, as I said, arthritis is on the rise in the United States. It already affects about one in four US adults or about 55 million people. And the Center for Disease Control expects that to grow to nearly 80 million people by 2040. In fact, it's going to overtake back pain as the most common musculoskeletal disorder and cause of pain and disability in our nation in the coming years. And in addition to being a difficult to treat uh, and a chronic degenerative condition, osteoarthritis is a very expensive condition to treat. According to the National Institute of Health, we spend about a quarter of a trillion dollars annually on the treatment of joint pain in our country. So if you're wondering why insurance is so expensive or why deductibles and things have gone up, one of the contributing factors to that uh, is knee pain and osteoarthritis and how costly the surgeries and other interventions are and how more and more people are needing those. Now today, uh, we're gonna be discussing not only this non-surgical treatment option that is safer, faster, more effective and longer lasting than surgery in many cases, but it's also far less costly and covered by most major insurances, including Medicare. In fact, if you have Medicare in a secondary, you're not gonna have any out-of-pocket cost. If you have TRICARE for life, you're not gonna have any out-of-pocket cost. So there's a lot of insurance that will cover everything we're gonna discuss here today in full. Uh, but again, before we get to that, circling back to the condition that we're trying to treat, in addition to being the most common and a very costly type of arthritis to treat, osteoarthritis is a degenerative condition that affects the bones and cartilage, resulting in pain, swelling, and loss of movement of the joints. Now, why the knee? Why so common in that joint versus other parts of the body? And I mean, it happens in the shoulder. Hyalgen's been FDA approved uh, to treat osteoarthritis in the shoulder since 2005, but most commonly we see this problem in the knees. And that's because it's the largest weight-bearing joint in the body. It's bearing all the weight above it. So the more we weigh, the more likely we are to develop osteoarthritis. So we're putting more load over time. Uh, it's also got a lot of mileage on it, if you will, since we've all been walking since we were about a year old. It's very susceptible to previous injury and not just catastrophic injuries like what I suffered playing football. Also little micro traumas, like if you bang your knee on the coffee table walking through the living room, those can actually disrupt the synovocytes, the glands in the joint capsule that produce synovial fluid and hyaluronic acid to cushion and lubricate the joint. So it doesn't have to be a big injury that causes dysfunction. It can be a series of smaller injuries as well. Also, the older we are, the more likely we are to develop osteoarthritis, not just because of the increased use, but also because the body begins producing less hyaluronic nat uh, acid naturally on its own, which causes that joint fluid to become thinner, the bones to move together, and friction to start breaking down cartilage and even bone. And last but not least, uh, deformity, uh, something called a varus or valgus deformity uh, was the medical term for it. You might be more familiar with the common speak for it, which is knock kneed or bow legged. Uh, and in most people with osteoarthritis, the joint has fallen out of alignment and we're putting most or all of the body weight on only half of the joint. So that increased pressure is going to wear down the cartilage and the structures of the joint more quickly. This is not unlike if you've ever had a car where your alignment went bad and you saw the tread pattern wear off of one side of the tire much more quickly than the other. And if you didn't do anything to fix your alignment, it eventually would result in a blowout. 
part of our clinical protocol, something that's rarely done, is we're going to look at that misalignment and actually do something to try and correct it and evenly distribute that weight again so that you're not wearing down one side of your joint much more quickly than the other. Even in these anatomical drawings that explain what the generative osteoarthritis looks like, you'll notice that one side of the joint appears a lot worse than the other side. And we're about to look at some real x-rays from actual patients. You're gonna see that same theme over and over and over again. So misalignment is one of the leading causes of this further destruction and breakdown, because again, you're putting 100% of the load on half of the joint uh, or you know, close to that, uh, if you will, depending on how bad your misalignment might be. Now, before we get into the x-rays, I wanna just briefly explain what the normal anatomy of a knee looks like. So we know what we're looking at and you understand what your body is going through and can make a more informed and educated decision about your treatment options moving forward. So up here in this top image, this triangular structure here, this is your kneecap or your patella, and it's designed to ride in this little channel of your femur bone, your thigh bone, uh, in between what are called the femoral condyles. There's a little channel basically that the kneecap will glide over. Those bone ends are covered in a thick cartilage called articular or hyaline cartilage, which is about the consistency of your fingernail, just to give you a visual. And that protects the nerves and the blood vessels that wrap the bone that are underneath it. Then in between your thigh bone, your femur and your shin bone, your tibia, there's also a soft cartilage, which is kind of dark blue here. And that is your meniscal cartilage, uh, which is the, the tire, if you will, if we're gonna stick to car uh, analogies here. And that creates the cushioning and the contact point if your bones ever do come together. Now, interestingly enough, that nursery rhyme we all heard about your knee bones connected to your shin bone is actually not true. Your bones are not physically connected to each other. In a properly working joint, your bones are actually going to glide next to each other and never come in contact. So part of osteoarthritis is this breakdown of that normal function where now your bones are either sometimes touching and grinding together or all the time touching and grinding together. And that friction breaks down the normal structures of the joint, like the cartilage, and leads to the pain and the loss of movement in the joint. And this all starts because there's a breakdown in the fluid-filled capsule of your joint called the synovium. Inside this capsule, there's a thick gel-like substance called synovial fluid, which is actually a non-Newtonian fluid. What that means is it doesn't follow the laws of physics. If you have water, uh, water will displace. If you take a boat and you launch it into a lake, it's gonna displace the water, it's gonna float. If you drain that lake of all the water and fill it with hyaluronic acid or synovial fluid, try to launch that boat again, the boat's gonna tip over. Because when you compress hyaluronic acid, it gets denser and it fights that compression. So it's like your body's natural shock absorber that's gonna keep that joint space open and healthy and functional and cushion and lubricate the joint as well. And to give you an idea of the consistency of it, it's like Purell hand sanitizer. It's a thick gel-like substance. It's not uh, real thin and water-like. And it's that hyaluronic acid component that gives it those special properties. Now, in osteoarthritis, your synovial fluid changes and it becomes more thin and water-like. You're producing less hyaluronic acid naturally. That allows the bones to come together and that friction to start breaking down cartilage and can even break off pieces of cartilage or bone like you see in this anatomical drawing. If you've ever been moving your knee, getting in and out of a car, going up and down stairs, putting your socks and shoes on or off, and you feel like your knee got caught on something and then it kind of releases, you're feeling one of those pieces of loose bone or cartilage actually getting stuck as you go through that range of motion. So this is a telltale sign of osteoarthritis and if you have any of those loose bodies present in your knee, you might actually even hear clicking, popping, grinding, cracking. It's called crepitaceous, crepitation, that's the legal term for it. Uh, and that is a telltale sign of more advanced osteoarthritis. So now I'd like to show you some real x-rays of actual patients that went through our advanced arthritis relief protocol. These x-rays were donated from two clinics certified in our procedures from the Orlando, Florida area. Now, the first x-ray is the closest example we could find of a normal knee. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it's hard to know uh, what's wrong if you don't know what right looks like. And it's also very difficult to make decisions about your healthcare if you don't have all the facts. 
I remember when I got my MRI of my bad knee, my right knee, no one told me or showed me what a normal MRI was supposed to look like. It was really used more like a scare tactic to convince me to undergo surgery and go under the knife uh, versus try non-surgical options. So I'd like you to know what your knee is supposed to look like. That way you can better understand what yours looks like compared to that, whether you already have x-rays or if you have those x-rays done when you go into the facility for your initial consultation. Now, this first image on the left here, it's a front to back view of the knee. And you can see that faint outline that looks like a guitar pick. That is your knee capsule, or your, I'm sorry, your kneecap, your patella. And you can actually see that channel that it glides in behind it. Uh, that's your femoral condyle, that's the valley in there. And if you look close, you can see the outlines of the thick cartilage on that femoral condyle, that fingernail type covering. In between the femur bone and the tibia, the thigh bone and the shin bone, there's what looks like a lot of open space here, right? And on x-ray, things that are dense like bone show up white. Things that are less dense like muscle or tissue uh, might show up gray or not at all. And fluids will show up black. Um, so it's not empty. What's holding this joint space open is actually synovial fluid and meniscal cartilage. So there should be a nice thick black band all the way through the joint space. That's a sign of a healthy, normal name. And then in the middle here, these two little round mounds that you see here are called tibial spines, and they should be smooth and rounded, not sharp and pointy, because that would be a sign of wear and tear. Now on this image here, this is a side view, and we're primarily looking at the kneecap and the femur bone. Is there space between them when you bend your knee? If there is, that's great. If there's not, that's a condition called patella femoral arthritis. So moving on to someone who actually has osteoarthritis, this is kelgren lorenz grade one, the earliest stage of osteoarthritis. Most people on this stage don't even know that they're suffering from the disease yet. They might have pain or swelling if they do a lot of heavy activities, but it's not an all day, every day thing. Maybe they pop a few Advil, go around their business and don't even know that anything is wrong. In this early stage of osteoarthritis, you can see there's a little bit of a loss of joint space, a little bit of wearing of the hard cartilage, and you can see here that the kneecap is not in perfect alignment with the femur bone anymore. So you might get some light grinding of that kneecap on the femur bone, causing some breakdown of cartilage with certain strenuous activities. But again, most people walking around with stage one osteoarthritis don't even know they have it. It's when you get to grade two that most people realize they have a problem. And this is where the joint space is reduced a little bit more. And now your body is starting to grow extra bone to offset this extra friction, this extra weight, this extra load bearing. It's called a bone spur or an osteophyte or thickening of the bone, which is called subconeural sclerosis. You can see there's kind of these thick white lines here at the top of the shin bone. That's the subconeural sclerosis. That's the body actually growing the bone more dense because it's trying to handle that impact that's happening that's not normal. So that's a telltale sign of more advanced osteoarthritis. Now, when you get to grade three and grade four, this is typically where things like oral NSAIDs and pain medications are really no longer working. Maybe even cortisone injections are failing to provide relief at this point, and you're being told surgery might be your only option. So in grade three osteoarthritis, there's still some joint space, but you can see it's significantly reduced. Very large bone spur growing here, kind of looks like half an almond. You can see the kneecap so badly out of alignment, it's hanging over the edge of the femur bone. And then here when we get to grade four, we're actually bone on bone. We actually have these bones constantly touching and grinding together every time you move. Now, if you're still walking without a cane, a walker, or a wheelchair, you probably are not bone on bone and don't have grade four arthritis. That or you have a really high tolerance of pain uh, and you can just power through it. So we have found that the term bone on bone is heavily overused in the orthopedic community. And a lot of people that are told that and are told surgery is their only option when they come in for consultations at our facilities around the country and they get their x-rays, they can actually see that they're not really bone on bone and they are earlier in the disease cycle than they thought. And this image is here to remind me about partial knee replacement surgeries. See, there's two types of knee replacement surgeries and we'll look at a total in a little bit. But in all those x-rays I just showed you, one half of the knee was a lot worse than the other half, right? So in a partial knee replacement, they replace only the half that's gone bad. Then they stitch your knee capsule back up and you go about your business. Now, if you've had a partial knee replacement and your pain and symptoms came back, 
you might actually still be a candidate for injection of hyaluronic acid because your knee capsule is still there. If you have a total knee replacement, they actually remove that capsule from your body. So now there are no non-surgical treatments left because the structures that we would try and repair and regenerate have actually been removed from you physically. Now, how do you know if you're a good candidate for the advanced arthritis relief protocol? In addition to not having already had a total knee replacement, um, there are many things that you can look at that you've tried and failed that would mean you might be a good candidate for this procedure. That includes using hot or cold packs, trying exercise or physical therapy, trying to lose weight, using various different medications, whether it's over-the-counter medications like Tylenol, Advil, Aleve, or whether it's prescription medications like hydrocodone, tramadol, or oxycontin. You can also have tried steroid injections, things like cortisone that maybe provided some relief at first, but aren't quite lasting as long as they used to, or maybe not working at all. If any or all of those treatments have failed you, you're in the right place, and you might be a good candidate for the advanced arthritis relief protocol, because that's where our specialized combination therapy of these injections of hyaluronic acid with a unique patented unloading knee brace that stops friction and further destruction of the joint and helps to realign the tibia and femur so you don't have that uneven load being placed on half your joint, along with physical therapy and home exercise could be right for you. And again, the goal of our advanced arthritis relief protocol is to delay or avoid the need for knee replacement surgery. So let's talk about the things you may have tried and failed in the past and how what we're discussing here today is different. So pain medications, opioids, hydrocodone, trimadol, oxycontin, et cetera, these are all a category of medications that are not designed to stop what's causing your pain, but are designed to reduce your sensation of that pain. So one of the biggest issues with pain medications is right now, if you overdo it, your knees hurt and you know, uh-oh, I did too much. Maybe I need to take a break and rest and recover and let my knees recover. Well, if you're taking pain medications, you don't get that pain response. So you can actually cause more damage to your joints than you know is taking place because you're grinding away that cartilage and bone, but you're not feeling the effects of it. And that's not to mention the other side effects of prescription pain medications, uh, which can be quite serious and even deadly. So what if you don't want to use the prescription stuff? What about the over-the-counter medications like Advil, which is ibuprofen, Aleve, which is sodium naproxen, Tylenol, which is acetaminophen? This is a category of drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And much like the prescription pain medications, they're designed to reduce the sensation of pain and to reduce inflammation, uh, but also like the prescription medications, they're not designed for long-term use and it can cover up when you're causing more damage. I actually learned this when my daughter was under a year old, she had her first big fever. Uh, we took her in the emergency room to get worked up and they said, you know, she has a flu, take her home, give her uh, Motrin, and then four hours later, give her Tylenol. And I'm like, oh, why both medications? And they go, oh, well, Tylenol is very difficult on the liver. Motrin is very difficult on the kidneys. If you switch back and forth, uh, it's less likely to cause any problems. Okay, great. So I go buy the two medications from the pharmacy. Uh, I get home to give them to my daughter. I want to make sure I do it right. So I peel the label and I read the entire instructions, something I've never done before in my whole life. And I read something that was shocking. It said not to be used for more than seven consecutive days. I said, holy cow, I must have been taking six to eight Advil every day for a year and a half. Nobody told me you're not supposed to use that stuff long term. And that's how about 3,500 people a year die from Tylenol in the United States. Tylenol is so safe. It can be given to infants, but it's safe when it's used properly. And when you start using the maximum dose every day for weeks, months, even years at a time, that's where it can damage the body and cause unintended side effects. So if you don't want prescription pain medications or these over-the-counter NSAIDs, looks like surgery is your only option, right? This is what I was once told, but that is wrong. What else is wrong is that surgery itself is not a guarantee. No one ever told me that the knee replacement surgery, had I gone through with it, could fail. It almost seemed like it was a guarantee that I was going to feel better and get function back. But it turns out the orthopedic surgical community themselves is aware that this may not be the perfect solution. And in fact, it might be getting worse. According to Dr. Kenneth Mathis, the chairman of the Methodist Center of Orthopedic Surgery in Houston, he was quoted as saying over the next decade, we're gonna see more than a 600% increase in revision knee replacement surgeries. What's that? What's a revision knee replacement surgery? 
Well, that's when the first surgery they did and the hardware that they installed fails, breaks, or doesn't work as intended. And this happens over 60,000 times in our country every year, caused by things such as infection, implant loosening, or breakage of the implant itself. What else is knee replacement surgery isn't nearly as um, effective long-term as you might be led to believe. In fact, up to 30% of patients are dissatisfied with the results of their knee replacement surgery after only a single year. And last, but definitely not least, uh, there are significant risks associated with knee replacement surgery up to and including death. In fact, one in 200 people who receive a knee replacement surgery dies within 90 days of surgery, not from the flu or getting hit by a bus, but from the actual side effects of the surgery itself. What if you have two osteoarthritic knees and they both need to be replaced? That means you have a 1% chance of not surviving that procedure, at least for an extended period of time. Those are not very good odds. If somebody gave me a bowl full of 100 M&Ms and said, have as many as you like, but one of them is poison and will kill you, I'm not going to eat any of those M&Ms. That is too high of a risk factor for me, a 1% chance of death. And again, like we discussed earlier with the picture of the partial knee replacement, in a total knee replacement, they're actually going to remove the knee capsule from the body that's full of that cushioning synovial fluid, and that's going to be discarded. So now you just have these plastic and metal implants that are grinding together constantly, and that can even release little pieces of plastic or metal into your body, which is why you've probably seen television commercials from law firms that say, you know, if you've had a knee or a hip replacement surgery and you've suffered from the following symptoms or conditions, you might be entitled to damages. You know, call XYZ law firm to see if you're a candidate for, you know, blah, blah, trust settlement. And that's because uh, the materials that these joint replacements are made of, like cobalt, uh, a heavy metal, um, can actually leak and leach into the system and cause heavy metal poisoning and a lot of other significant side effects. Now, the technology in this hardware has really advanced, so you don't see as many of those commercials on TV as you used to, uh, but those are serious risk factors to take into consideration. Other risk factors are the anesthesia. Not only that small risk of not waking up, but a much more common condition called postoperative cognitive dysfunction, or POCD. This is a condition that primarily affects the elderly. In fact, it affects about 12% of people age 60 or older, and it mimics Alzheimer's or dementia, where you have difficulty with, with memory, with cognition and basic tasks, even with speech. And that's because your body has not metabolized all of the anesthetic that was used to put you under during the surgery. For some people, it takes days, weeks, even months to filter that medication out of their system. And it can oftentimes be misdiagnosed as a neurocognitive disorder. It also increases your risk of cerebrovascular events like heart attack or stroke. So some other considerations, but we're not here to scare you with these drugs, surgeries, and side effects. We're here to talk about a non-surgical alternative that's safer, less costly, and possibly even more effective and long lasting than the surgical solution. Because everything we talked about now isn't really solving the problem, it's treating the symptoms. Osteoarthritis starts out as a drying problem and nothing we discussed so far addresses that. So a little science experiment you can do at home to understand how this works and why it makes so much sense. Take a regular sponge, get it soaking wet, try and rip it in half. No matter how hard you try, you're not gonna be able to tear this thing. Crumble it up into a ball, it's gonna spring back to its original shape very quickly. Now let that sponge sit for a day or two to where it's moist but no longer soaking wet. Now try and rip it, you'll probably be able to tear it. Crumble it up into a ball. It's not gonna spring back to its original shape as quickly or even at all. Now let it sit for another day or two till it's bone dry. You don't even have to try and tear it. Take that dry sponge, put it in your hand, make a fist and it's gonna crumble like dust. Why is that? That sponge hasn't changed at a molecular level or chemically since a few days earlier. What changed was its hydration. And we are made mostly of water as, as humans, and it plays a very important role, uh, hydration, in the normal function of our body. So if your knee joint does not have the proper amount of cushioning and lubricating fluid, it can break down and wear away. And what's worse is your cartilage, that's there's your last line of defense, it becomes more brittle when it's not properly hydrated and lubricated, which means it weakens it and makes your breakdown 
much more quickly. So as synovial changes from thick and oil-like to very thin and water-like and you have less of it, it causes all these issues. So wouldn't it make sense to just fill a joint capsule back up with nice thick fluid again? This is not a trick question. This is joint lubrication therapy or a procedure clinically called visco supplementation. It's a process by which medications using hyaluronic acid uh, and FDA approved, I'm sorry, FDA cleared uh, product for replenishing that fluid um, is put inside your joint capsule. And this is unlike other types of injections like cortisone injections. See, cortisone is a powerful anti-inflammatory. That's why if you've ever had a sinus infection or upper respiratory infection and you're coughing up a lot of mucus and things, maybe your doctor prescribed a medication like prednisone, a steroid, and you took those tablets and in a day or two, it dried everything out. And all of a sudden your inflection cleared up and you didn't have that extra mucus. Well, injections of corticosteroids work very similarly. They dry up the area in which it's been injected and reduces inflammation. So if you have a drying problem and then you inject something that causes more drying, wouldn't that make it worse? Again, that's not a trick question. This is actually what the medical community is starting to change its opinion to. In fact, major clinical institutions like the Mayo Clinic no longer use cortisone injections for people with osteoarthritis because they've deemed the risk factors to outweigh the benefits. The other risk factors include loss of bone uh, and because corticosteroids are actually glucocorticosteroids, glucose. They come from uh, a complex sugar molecule that's actually harvested from a special sweet potato that grows in the Amazon rainforest. When your body breaks this down, it increases your blood sugar levels. So if you're diabetic, it can have serious side effects. And even if you're not, repeated cortisone injections can lead to the development of conditions such as cataracts uh, and other degenerative conditions where uh, microvasculature is very important. So the side effects are pretty high. The outcomes are not that great and they don't last very long, which I'm sure you'll know if you've had cortisone injections in the past. So a little food for thought. Better idea, why not just change the joint oil? Medical procedure called visco supplementation. And this is a process by which FDA cleared medications such as Hyalgin or Genvisc or uh, Orthovisc or Trivisc are used to increase uh, that synovial fluid and more importantly, to stimulate the synovocytes, the glands that, need to, that create that fluid to start making more hyaluronic acid on their own. So I'd like to take a moment just to play a brief video for you that shows the procedure being performed. Osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, is the most common type of arthritis. With osteoarthritis, the surface layer of cartilage breaks down and wears away. This allows the bones under the cartilage to rub together, resulting in pain, swelling, and loss of motion of the joint. Although in some people it progresses quickly, in most individuals, joint damage develops gradually over years. Visco supplementation therapy is a non-surgical outpatient procedure by which a pain relief medication called hyaluronic acid is injected into the knee joint. This medication mimics the body synovial fluid of the knee that lubricates the cartilage. Hyaluronic acid will help the knee to move smoothly, reducing or relieving the pain of osteoarthritis. In preparation for the injection, the physician sterilizes the knee and administers a local anesthetic. The physician positions an imaging device called a fluoroscope over the knee. The fluoroscope will display a moving x-ray of the inside of the knee that will ensure the hyaluronic acid reaches the joint space. The physician carefully guides a needle into the joint space. The physician confirms the placement into the knee joint with an injection of contrast dye. The contrast dye is clearly visible on the fluoroscope image. If the dye pools in the soft tissue at the front of the knee, the physician will adjust the depth and angle of needle placement until the joint capsule of the knee is reached. When the contrast dye flows throughout the joint capsule, the physician knows they are ready to inject the hyaluronic acid. While leaving the needle in position, the physician removes the contrast dye syringe and replaces it with a syringe filled with hyaluronic acid. The physician injects the hyaluronic acid into the joint space within the knee. The hyaluronic acid will bind with the synovial fluid inside the joint, cushioning and lubricating the joint. When the injection is complete, the physician removes the needle and bandages the knee. Ice is then applied to reduce swelling. Hyaluronic acid is administered in a series of five injections one week apart. Pain relief can be immediate and has been shown to last for six months or longer. In addition to the hyaluronic acid injections, knee bracing and physical therapy are utilized to enhance the effects of the medication. 
So hopefully that helps you better understand the procedure that we're discussing here today. And I do want to point out two questions that always come up after that video that I'll address straight away. One is, does the procedure hurt? And I can tell you as someone who's received these series of injections three times in my bad knee, that you don't really feel them. In fact, most people say it hurts less than a flu shot or a vaccine or any basic type of needle-based procedure. And that's because our facilities use two types of anesthetic to numb the injection site. One is a cooling spray called ethyl chloride, which actually freezes the surface of the skin so that you don't feel uh, the pinch or the insertion of the needle. And then typically an anesthetic like lidocaine 2% is used thereafter to numb the area. So not only do you not feel the injection, but you also have that numbing effect for a few hours afterwards. And by the time it wears off, there's usually no pain or discomfort whatsoever. The second question I always get is, hey, it says it only lasts for six months or longer. Um, is that true? Do I have to have this done every six months? And the answer to that is no. Now, most insurances will cover this every six months if you do need it, especially if your osteoarthritis is very severe and it takes more than one round of injections to get your maximum improvement. But there has been longer term research done since uh, about a decade ago when I made that video. Uh, in fact, one research study following about 2000 patients at a three year follow up, over 82% of the patients still had a reduction in pain and improvement in function. That three year follow up actually beats almost all the research on similar time follow ups on knee replacement surgery. So not only are these injections safer, faster, easier, and less costly, but they may even work better and last longer than their surgical alternative. They're also well proven. These medications have been used tens of millions of times, both domestically and abroad. Hyaluronic acid was first discovered and theorized to use as a treatment for uh, joint degeneration in 1982 in Italy. And it was actually first used on racehorses. Uh, until it was tried in humans in 1985. And the first uh, medication to receive FDA clearance in the United States was Hyalgin uh, back in 1997. So these medications have been around for a long time. Um, they are very safe. Um, they've also been proven very effective. And again, this is something that's covered by most insurances, including Medicare. And hyaluronic acid does three major things in people with osteoarthritis. It cushions the joint, lubricates the joint, but most importantly, it binds with the fluid producing cells within the joint called the synovocytes to stimulate them to start producing thick, normal synovial fluid again, more rich in hyaluronic acid. So think of this like training your car to make its own fresh oil. So you never have to get an oil change ever again. That's what we're trying to do. The goal is not for you to come back and have these injections over and over again, as much as we'd like to see you, not for that reason. Uh, we want this to last as long as possible. And the results do depend a little bit on how bad your osteoarthritis is. Mine was quite severe. Uh, I had bone-on-bone -bone contact. I had worn through my meniscal cartilage. I had worn through part of my hyaline cartilage. So my symptoms come back about every seven to eight years, and I have to go through another round of injections. But I've been able to avoid surgery for nearly two decades now. More good news. Visco supplementation is technically a natural substance. It's not a drug. That's why it's called visco supplementation, like a supplement. It's a naturally occurring substance, and it will not interact with any other medications you're on. It has no known serious side effects, uh, very safe medication. In fact, so safe, it's used in place of placebo in certain research studies, like with diabetics, for example, where a sugar pill uh, might be dangerous. They'll use a hyaluronic acid capsule uh, because of how safe and benign it is. So at this point, you're probably wondering if this is so good, how come I haven't heard about it before? Must be too good to be true. What's the catch? So let's talk about that. What if you've had these injections in the past and they didn't work? Well, what was injected matters. There's dozens of different visco supplements that are FDA cleared now, and they're not all a series of five injections one week apart. Some are a series of three, some are two, and there's even single shot injections out there. And the reason that matters is because research has shown the more you repeat the injections, the more it stimulates and retrains the synovocytes to produce hyaluronic acid naturally and on its own. So if you do that one shot, uh, it might be a great little fill up, but it's likely to wear off more quickly than doing a series of injections. How it was injected also matters. If you went to a doctor's office and they just kind of felt around uh, your knee and then injected you with a needle, 
That's a non-guided or blind injection. And they actually fail to reach the joint capsule about 21% of the time, according to the American Journal of Sports Medicine. We use video guidance to see the procedure happening so that we can see where the needle is and we can use a small amount of contrast dye to confirm placement inside the joint capsule because hyaluronic acid um, for as great a molecule as it is, has to be administered a specific way to be effective. And that's because it is so thick and so dense, it doesn't cross tissue membranes. So if you're not in the joint capsule and you inject the medication, it's not gonna do anything to help you. It has to be inside that joint space to work properly. Also, did you receive an unloading knee brace, especially if you've been told you're bone on bone? If you're bone on bone, how's that medication gonna get into that compartment? So we use a special patented unloading knee brace to mechanically increase that joint space, allow the medication to get into that compartment, cushion and lubricate the joint, and helps not only stop additional damage, but give your body a chance to recuperate and potentially even regrow some of the structures that might've been worn away or damaged, such as your meniscal cartilage. Last but not least, were you given any type of physical therapy or home exercise to strengthen the ligaments of your knee after the injections? And the reason that matters is because almost everyone with osteoarthritis has a varus or valgus deformity. The joint has moved too much inward or outward and caused that uneven load and that uneven bend in the knee, that knock kneed or bow-legged presentation. If you don't correct that misalignment, whatever benefit you get from these injections is gonna be short-lived because you're putting all that stress on that small portion of the joint again, and you're gonna eventually wear down any improvement you got from the procedure. So we have to try and realign that joint to make sure you don't wind up back in the same situation you were when we found you. Now also all these joint therapy injections are not created equally. There's one particular medication if you've ever had it in the past and didn't have great results, they wore off very quickly. It's called Synvisc. Um, Synvisc actually has a different active ingredient than every other visco supplement that's FDA cleared. Uh, their active ingredient is something called hyaline uh, versus hyaluronic acid. Hyaline is a chemically cross-linked laboratory manufactured bioidentical. They use components like latex and vinyl sulfone and formaldehyde to, to create this artificial substance that looks like hyaluronic acid under a microphone, uh, microscope and maybe acts like hyaluronic acid, but it isn't. And in clinical research, it's been proven to be much less effective than hyaluronic acid. In fact, according to the American College of Rheumatology, um, they said, quote, in view of the likely lack of a superior effectiveness of hyaluron over hyaluronic acid and the increased risk of local adverse events associated with hyaluron, we discourage the use of intraarticular hyaluron in patients with osteoarthritis of the knee. So what they're saying there is that the risks way outweigh the benefits and they don't think this should be used on people with OA. So if you've had Synvisc and that didn't work, you're in the right place. Uh, the medications that we utilize are likely to be more effective. And most importantly, we're going to administer them in the right way. Uh, these devices here on the right-hand side of this side are some examples of what a video fluoroscope looks like to allow us to see inside the joint capsule in real time to ensure that medication gets to where it needs to go and to overcome that risk of missing the spot for this medication to be effective. Now, this is what an arthrogram actually looks like. That's where we do a small injection of contrast dye and watch how it behaves. If that dye spreads towards the back of the knee and up behind the knee capsule, we know we're inside the joint capsule and ready to inject the medication. If that dye just pools like an ink blot, we know that we're not inside the capsule and we have to adjust the depth and angle of needle placement until we get inside that space to administer the medication properly. Now, when our program is followed and the advanced arthritis relief protocol is utilized, the results are really extraordinary. In a randomized multi-center study of 384 patients, 356 of those patients had a 50% or greater loss of pain improvement of function, and only one patient had no improvement at all. So nearly everyone got some relief from this. And that's because our patented three-step approach addresses every contributory factor to your osteoarthritis, or at least everything that can be addressed. If your joint space is compressed, we'll use an unloading knee brace to hold it open. We'll use the injections of hyaluronic acid to build that space back up and to stimulate the synovocytes to produce more fluid so you don't have to wear that brace forever. And after a few weeks or a few months, you can take it off and that joint space will be maintained. 
will utilize a physical therapy protocol or a home exercise device to help strengthen the ligaments and pull that joint back into proper alignment so that we don't have that uneven wear and tear. Uh, and most people experience significant results within the first few visits. So you can feel this working, uh, know that it's helping, and also know that it's covered by most insurances, including Medicare. Now, this is real evidence of how the unloading knee brace works. This is a medial bone on bone contact, so the inside of the knee. And here's just a few minutes later after the application of the brace, you can see that joint space open up. Now, here's a lateral bone on bone contact. And again, how we were able to increase that joint space on the outside of the knee by applying this brace and uh, issuing that corrective pressure. Now, this is an actual patient that came through one of our original facilities back in January 2011 uh, through March of 2013. She was an 86-year-old African-American female. She was uh, very overweight. She was confined to a wheelchair, and she was in a nursing home. She was not a good candidate for surgery, not only because of those risk factors, but because she previously had a titanium rod installed for a femur break. And here you can see she's very badly bone on bone, very large osteophytes beginning to fuse. This was actually the most difficult case we've ever seen on x-ray. But here she is just 26 months later, and look at all that joint space and also how much more dense her bone is and her muscle is. What happened? How'd that take place? Well, these injections worked so well that she was able to go from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane to by the time we took this x-ray, she was walking under her own power. She had lost over 60 pounds. And as a result of that and being able to move more, uh, her bone density increased, her muscle density increased, and she was actually able to leave the nursing home and go to an independent living facility, something that she was very proud of, but she did not want to be a burden on her friends or family. So this protocol has been proven quite effective in various patients. I'm just one living, breathing example. But the next step to see if this is right for you is to take advantage of a risk-free, no-cost consultation. And that's why I'd like to encourage you to type in your name, the city and state you're located in, and the best phone number to reach you at into the chat box so that one of our new patient coordinators can schedule a time for you to meet with the medical team at the respective facility closest to you and to look at your specific condition, your specific needs, and see if we can reach your goals to reduce your pain and improve your function, including helping you get back to certain activities you may no longer be able to do, like golfing, dancing, or hiking. And I ask you to please tell the medical team about those activities that you can no longer do and hope to return to, because that's going to impact your physical therapy and portions of the protocol. Let's say, for example, you wanna go back to golf. That's something that requires the utilization of a lot of rotation. So they're gonna do certain exercises that are gonna strengthen your lateral ligaments so that you can withstand that rotation, not injure your knee and get back on the golf course. Now, the last thing I'd like to speak to you about before I take questions, um, and if you have any questions, you can type them into the Q&A box, or if you'd like to ask your questions verbally, scroll your mouse over the control pad. Here for Zoom, there's a little hand icon. If you click on that, it will raise your hand, and then I can click to unmute you and allow you to ask your question. So we'll get to questions in just a few minutes here. Uh, Nita from Georgia, I see you raised your hand. Thank you. We'll get to you shortly. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to point out and explain just one last thing, which is the regenerative medicine component, platelet-rich plasma. Everything else we've discussed today covered by all insurances, including Medicare. Platelet-rich plasma covered by some insurances, such as TRICARE, if you're a military uh, veteran or dependent. Um, but this is something that we fall back on in the really severe cases, especially if you've got a meniscal tear or a past surgical history that's created scar tissue and loss of range of motion and pain. In patients that don't have a full recovery from the injections of hyaluronic acid, we will actually take a small amount of blood um, and concentrate the plasma. That's the suspension aspect of your blood that many other cells travel inside of, such as growth factors and cytokines. So if you ever cut yourself after that red blood stops flowing and you see that clear or yellowish fluid, that's your plasma and will form a scab. Those are your platelets. And then that'll cause uh, cells called fibroblasts to accumulate, which will create collagen, elastin, fibronectin, the building blocks of soft tissue. So when that scab falls off and you have healthy normal skin there again, that's the process that took place. Now in parts of your body where there's not a good blood supply, like a knee capsule or a shoulder capsule or a hip capsule. Basically, all your joint capsules have very poor blood supply internally because it's this closed off space. Uh, we can borrow that peripheral blood, concentrate those healing properties, 
and put it where you've had the injury. This x-ray on screen is just an example of a single patient. This was an 88-year-old male patient uh, that came from one of our clients' facilities outside of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is pre and post after three injections of platelet-rich plasma. And you can see we were able to increase that joint space, regenerate some cartilage, and that gentleman was able to return to the golf course, something he hadn't done over 17 years. So regenerative medicine is an option we have available to you if needed. And I do also want to point out, even if that component is not covered by insurance, it is not very costly. When platelet-rich plasma was first used in our country, I believe one of the first people to have it done was Tiger Woods in 1995, 1996, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, he paid a Canadian physician a half a million dollars to fly down and do a PRP injection for him. I think Kobe Bryant spent about a quarter million dollars with a physician in Germany uh, when he tore some ligaments in his knee. This used to be a technology that was reserved for the ultra wealthy, for celebrities and athletes and captains of industry. But the technology to concentrate these platelets and growth factors has advanced quite a bit. Um, almost like if you buy a flat screen TV, now they're a few hundred bucks, but they used to be tens of thousands of dollars. As technology increases, things get less costly. So now these PRP injections can be done for just a couple hundred dollars. Quick outpatient procedure, about 15 minutes uh, in and out of the facility. Um, so the technology is really advanced. And that means it's more affordable and faster and easier and more effective for you. Now, while I ask uh, answer any questions that you all might have here today, Again, I just want to remind you, if you're ready to take advantage of a risk-free, no-cost consultation, please type in yes, uh, the city and state that you're located in, and the best phone number to reach you at into the Q&A box or the chat box, and a new patient coordinator from the facility closest to you will reach out to schedule you for that evaluation. For those of you out in the central United States in Tulsa, Oklahoma area, you can reach Joint Restoration Center at 918-303. 5633 or online at jointrestorationcenter.com. Uh, that being said, I'd like to get to your questions. And let me see if I can get to uh, that one who raised their hand. Uh, I don't see that hand up anymore. Maybe I answered their question. So I'll go to the Q&A box. A couple questions here. Uh, Patricia from Georgia. My mother's asthmatic and she uses Proventil and Advair. I used Advair 250-50 for a long time. I'm very familiar with that medication. Will the medication offered uh, be a problem for her to take? I can actually speak directly from experience on that because I was on Advair 250-50 uh, for a very long time, uh, including when I had these joint injections done because I was premature baby uh, and suffered from asthma as well. Um, so no, that does not interact with these medications. In fact, there are no known drug interactions from hyaluronic acid, meaning no matter what other medications you're on, uh, this is not going to interact with those medications and cause side effects or problems. Uh, another question is how do we make an appointment and can we get a copy of the webinar? Uh, great questions. To make an appointment, you can either type in yes, the best phone number to reach you at, and the city and state you're located in, and a new patient coordinator will reach out to schedule you. Uh, or if you'd like to contact the clinics directly, you can. Their contact information is up on screen. Regards a copy of this webinar, it is being recorded. And not only can a copy be provided to you to review, but I also highly encourage if you have any friends, family members, coworkers that are suffering from degenerative osteoarthritis to share the recording with them because this risk-free, no-cost consultation is something we make available as much as possible to as many people as possible because that can be the first step in reducing pain, improving function, and getting your life back without drugs or surgery. And it's something we are very pleased to share with others. Uh, Annette from Oklahoma asks, will this work on a thumb joint? Great question. So hyaluronic acid is FDA cleared for use in the knee and the shoulder. In other joints, it's considered off-label. Now that doesn't mean it can't be used. Uh, physicians are allowed to prescribe medications off-label. It just means that your insurance isn't going to cover it. Now, speaking about the thumb specifically, um, we actually treated uh, my father who had uh, rheumatoid arthritis in his thumb and one of our clients up in Syracuse, New York, who had psoriatic arthritis uh, in his thumb. Both of those patients did very well. And uh, the out-of-pocket cost for Hyalgin, for example, which is probably the medication that would be used in your thumb, uh, is about $80 uh, for the syringe, just eight zero. Um, that's it. So the medication is not very expensive, 
if you're going to use it in other joints that are not covered. Latonia from Georgia asks, I have used monovisc. How different is this compared to monovisc? So monovisc is not a bad product. Um, it's just a high dose. You're getting 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid all at once instead of having 25 milligrams of hyaluronic acid injected once a week for five weeks. So monovisc, uh, gel one, uh, these single injection medications, um, they're good medications. I've seen patients get good results from them. The problem is that the, the results usually don't last as long because again, you're not retraining the synovocytes to produce more hyaluronic acid on their own. You're basically doing a fill up versus correcting the problem so that the joint can fill itself naturally moving forward. Also, when you get a single injection, um, you have to come back to, did that get into the joint capsule or not? You know, American Journal of Sports Medicine says 21% chance that the injection is going to miss the joint. Well, if you happen to be one of those 21%, you're only getting a single injection. That means there's no chance it's going to work for you. If you get a series of three or five injections, better statistical chance some of that medication is going to get inside the joint capsule. And again, in our facilities, every facility that's been certified in the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol is going to use video x-ray guidance to ensure the medication gets where it needs to go. So yes, this can still work for you, even if monovisc failed to work for you. Another question here uh, is, does Cigna cover this? Uh, great question. And yes, Cigna does cover this. In fact, most major insurances cover this. Humana, Aetna, United, Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, TriWest, Humana Military, uh, very, very common also work comp, uh, personal injury insurance uh, will cover this. So most insurances cover this. If you're concerned about whether or not your insurance will cover it, uh, one of the things that will happen when you schedule your risk-free no-cost consultation is if you provide your insurance information to the clinic, they will perform a complimentary verification of benefits and check with your health plan to make sure that it's covered. And if there's any portion of it that's not covered, then we'll find out what your co-insurance deductible or copay might be. So you'll know that when you come on in. Um, another question here was about ankles. Same answer is for the thumb. The medication can be used off label. You might have to pay for the cost of the medication itself. Um, and another question here is asking for more information about shockwave therapy. I'm gonna have you direct that question directly to the facility there. When you go in for your consultation, they can discuss that with you as well. So that got through all of the typed questions there. And I just want to go back. I see a couple of people raised their hand. So let's start with Marilyn from Oklahoma. Uh, Marilyn, what is your question? Oh, and um, to unmute yourself, you just have to scroll your mouse over the control panel and click on the little microphone icon, and that will allow you to speak. While we're waiting for Marilyn to figure that out, um, uh, James, I see that you have a question as well. James from Oklahoma. There we go, James. What's your question? Nope. I, I'm ready. If you can hear me. Oh, there we go, Marilyn. I can hear you. I'll take your question. What is it? I uh, was diagnosed with bone on bone, I think, with both knees over a year ago. I'm in Tulsa, by the way. And uh, they said I was sent to finally to the surgeon and uh, was told that, no, they would not operate until my A1C, because I am a bad diabetic, my A1C reached to be about seven. Well, because there's been a lot of stress, and I won't even go into that. Um, I haven't reached that goal yet. I've come down lower, but I haven't reached that goal. How does diabetes come into play with this procedure? Uh, does it make it riskier? Does it have any effect at all? Um, it doesn't make it riskier, Marilyn, because we're not going to use corticosteroids unless you have significant inflammation in the joint. The joint needs to be drained. You know, corticosteroids can increase blood sugar levels and be risky in diabetics. But hyaluronic acid does not affect blood sugar levels whatsoever. And the risk factors associated with a very simple injection procedure like this are much lower than those associated with a surgery like a joint replacement. So we actually see a lot of patients like you they're not good candidates for surgery. Maybe they have COPD or emphysema or other um, the comorbidities that increase their surgical risk factors, like what you're suffering from with diabetes in your A1C. Well, you can safely go through a treatment like this and see if it works uh, to potentially 
avoid that surgery that might be more risky. And then let's pretend for a minute that it does work and it reduces your pain and increases your function. One of the greatest ways to help get your A1C down and keep your diabetes in check is through exercise. But it's difficult to exercise when it's excruciatingly painful. So a lot of people find that if the pain is resolved, they can increase their exercise and activity. Now their diabetes gets under control. Now their COPD or emphysema gets better. Their heart disease gets better. So we see people that have a lot of other chronic health conditions that improve after going through the advanced arthritis relief protocol, because without the pain, when they move, they can be more active. And, you know, physical activity is great for the human body, um, but it's difficult to do when every step you take is excruciating. Yes. So hopefully yes. that answers your question. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Marilyn. Um, take advantage of that risk-free consultation, and I hope this works for you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, James, were you able to uh, figure out how to unmute your microphone there, sir? If you're if you are, you're welcome to ask your question. I apologize for the technical difficulties with the Zoom here. Um, and then I did see one more question into the chat box. Um, can you do this in your knees and shoulder at the same time, Latanya from Georgia? Uh, yes, you can. You can do multiple joints at the same time on the same visit. Um, knee and shoulder are separate areas, so it's not going to be an issue. Uh, when it comes to doing uh, your knees, though, because we are using an anesthetic to numb the area, typically it's done one knee at a time. You would come in with your right knee on one date, your left knee on another date if you were bilateral, because if we numb both the knees and do these injections, you're liable to fall if you, if you walk out with both of them numbed up. Now, if you're coming a really long distance or you're coming from a nursing home or something of that nature, you have medical transportation, we can do both knees at the same time, but we might hold you in the office a little bit longer to let that anesthetic wear off so that you can walk and ambulate uh, more safely after the procedure. So great question. Um, thank you very much. And I think that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Uh, if there's anybody's questions I missed, um, and James out in Oklahoma, I'm sorry we couldn't get the, the microphone to work for you there, sir. Um, any questions that have not been addressed, please direct them to the clinic when you go in for your risk-free no-cost consultation. For those of you out in Oklahoma, you're gonna contact Joint Restoration Center at 918-303-5633 or online at jointrestorationcenter.com. Thanks again for taking the time out of your day to meet here with us today. I hope that you learned something new about osteoarthritis, but more importantly, um, I hope you learned about something that might help you reduce your pain and improve your function, even if other treatments such as cortisone injections have failed to provide relief for you before. Now, this risk-free no-cost consultation is oftentimes the first step in finding relief and getting your life back as it was for me and so many thousands of patients nationwide. So I wish you the best of luck on those consultations and hope that this provides relief and improvement of function for you, just as it has for me and so many others. Thank you again for allowing me to speak to you here today. And again, best of luck in your recovery from osteoarthritis.